Well, happy Easter 2023. Today, many of us will be or already have been uh, at our local church and we're really expressing our thanks and enjoying uh, what Jesus did for us. We're celebrating celebrating the, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and I hope you're enjoying that. And that's so such a, an exciting thing that we get to celebrate because there's a lot of meaning between uh, what the resurrection means for us. Without the resurrection, then our whole faith is meaningless uh, and would actually be considered a joke. And that resurrection did something great. Um, for those that believe, it gives us eternal life. That means life that does not have an end, even though we die, um, we shall live. And this is a forever thing, right? It's not because it's our life extended. It's actually the life of Christ being given to us. And part of what a lot of us are going to be doing in our um, service this morning is we're going to be talking about like how do we um, express that love and appreciation for what Jesus did for us. Um, and the question will be like, hey, we got we got to please Jesus, right? And today, as we as we like just relish and enjoy and soak in what the resurrection means, I want to talk about what can you do to please God? How can you say, thank you so much, Jesus, for everything that you've done for me? So first of all, I want to talk about how you don't do it, okay? Now, this is going to offend the religious ego, but hear me all the way through. I say the religious ego because I almost can forecast some of the comments from the religious elite, you know, the guy that tells you he's without sin, he's without struggle. So the first way we don't um, express our appreciation. The way we don't please God um, is not by avoiding sin. Now, when I say that, there will be some that will say, huh, uh, there you go, uh, heretic. You're saying that sin doesn't matter. You're saying that we should just lie, cheat, and steal. I'm not saying that. You're saying that God doesn't care about sin, and it's just okay to do whatever we want. No, not saying that either. Um, I'm saying that sin will never fulfill us. Um, it will always leave us empty. And indeed, we are called to avoid sin. But we don't avoid sin because it pleases God, right? If anything, we avoid sin because it pleases us. We are never satisfied when we're walking in sin. We are never satisfied unless we're walking in the spirit, which is done by walking outside on the opposite side of darkness, right? So that's how we get fulfilled. And this idea that somehow God is looking down, really impressed with us, like, wow, look at how good Mike did today. He didn't make any bad choices. Well, I think it's nonsense. and We don't see that in the scriptures. And it's OK to say that doesn't please God. Avoiding sin doesn't please God. That doesn't change the fact that we shouldn't sin. That doesn't change the fact that we should avoid bad choices. Right. You can have both in the, in harmonious, harmoniously. They're just fine. But this idea, again, that God is like, you're just amazing. Look at you. Jesus took away our sin, right? He remembers them no more. He was the propitiation for our sins and the full payment on the cross, right? And then we get up saying, yeah, so if I want to please God, I need to avoid sin. So that's my first one I want to say is you're not going to please him by avoiding sin, right? I don't care if one guy over here avoided 617 sins yesterday and the other guy over here actually committed 617 sins yesterday. God is no more pleased if they're both believers. He's no more pleased with guy number one as he is with guy number two, right? And again, guy number two who committed the sins is probably living a miserable life because sin will never fulfill him. But God is pleased with us because of Christ, right? What's the other one? What's the other way we don't please God? Well, the method of pleasing God, the other way, um, is not through, or the way we avoid it, uh, or the way that we please him, I'm sorry, is not through good works, right? It's not through you getting out there, going to church every Sunday, going on mission trips, helping everybody out, giving to charities, right? Tithing. Those things do not please God, Right? Am I saying that again, this is where we get that the hypocrites who come in and say, oh, you're saying that God doesn't care about good works. And then they start citing James out of context. Uh, Faith without works is dead. Back it up, back it up, back it up. I'm not saying 
that we shouldn't have works. We are indeed made for good works, right? We are only happy when we're walking in those works that Christ uh, prepared beforehand for us. But this idea that the God who created everything is somehow, look at you, you're amazing. Mike, you did so much stuff. I'm just so pleased with you. Unlike Bobby over here, who all he did was go to church one time last week. Mike, you went four times. You tied 18%. Uh, and you did this, that, and the other. We see, we start, I want you to notice where the focus is. The focus then becomes on what I did. I'm saying God's pumped up because of what I did. We've taken the focus of Christ and we flipped it around. Hey, the way we please God is by what we do. And all I'm saying is this, let's avoid sin. Let's have good works. We're called to do those things. But the way we please God is not by doing those things. And the moment we start teaching that, is the moment we flip the attention on ourselves. Look at me. I'm making good choices. I'm doing good things. God, aren't you impressed with me, right? And really, the entire feeling that we as Christians should have is, aren't we impressed with what Jesus did for us, right? So a couple of verses I just want to point out. Acts chapter 17, verse 25, he says, God is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. In other words, are we called to serve and do good things? Yeah. But the scriptures are telling us, hey, get over yourself. If you're doing these things because you are you think you're earning favor from God, really? He is the creator of all things. He doesn't need any of us to get these things done. Oh, well, God couldn't do it if we didn't do this, that, and the other. And it's simply not true. God is the creator of all things. He is not served with human hands. He can do anything he wants and doesn't need any of us to perform. So again, does that mean uh, because he's not served with human hands? Remember, he's God. Does that mean um, that it's not good to do good things? Of course not. But who you doing good works is you living out your identity. You will be pleasing yourself. You won't be pleased unless you are making good choices and out there letting Jesus live in and through you. Another one is uh, John one of them, I like to cite this verse a lot. It's John chapter uh, 6, verse 28 and 29. He says, therefore, they said to him, now this is the religious elites, right? Calling out Jesus on works. Like, hey, what do we do, Jesus? You tell us, Jesus, what are the works, plural, right? What are the works that please God? And Jesus, of all, if, if anyone, he had the time right there to say, yeah, here's a big laundry list. And then we could build a sermon out of it if that's what Jesus did. But instead, Jesus that's something interesting. He says, well, hey, guys, here's the work. It's not works, not plural. Here's the work that pleases God. Here it is, that you believe in the son whom God sent. So what pleases God? That you believe the gospel message, the message of the cross, the resurrection. And that's what we're celebrating here on Easter. Romans chapter 4 Verses four and five. I love this. The apostle Paul says, now the one who works, right? Who does all kinds of things. Now, Paul's not against work. He's just making a point. The one who works, uh, the wages are not credited as a favor, right? But you're getting what is due you. But the one who does not work, again, Paul's not anti-works. He's making a point, but believes, Oh, this is, seems to be very happy to God who justify who, who believes in him, who justifies the ungodly, um, has his faith has been credited as righteousness. And lastly, just one more verse. It's Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. He says, but faith, uh, what, uh, sorry, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what do we, let's just wrap up here. What am I saying today? Look, it, Jesus did something pretty amazing for us. He died on the cross. He shed his blood while we were sinners, while we were making stupid decisions. And then he was resurrected to give us new life. And it is natural to say, God, I, I want to please you. So we're not saying let's not focus on pleasing God. And we're not saying we should go out and sin. And we're not saying we should not have good works. We are saying, yes, we should avoid sin. You will never be fulfilled unless you walk in his spirit. We're not saying don't do good things. You're not going to be fulfilled unless you're doing good works, right? It's part of the natural Christian life. So how do we please God? Here's how we please God. This is what impresses God. This is what warms his heart, I would say. It's that you believe. Believe what? 
right? That you believe Jesus died on the cross. That when you do make bad choices, um, you're able to look up to God and say, I believe Jesus died for my sin. I believe he had the power and the authority to take my sins away. And he did it, not just for one sin, not for the one I only committed twice, but even for those sins that some people commit a lot frequently or all too often, not just the little ones, but even the big ones. And I'm saying that it's believed that Jesus is sufficient, that he's enough. And if that's your heart that you want to please God, I don't know, whoever's listening to this video, some of you are in a season of making really dumb choices. And you really shouldn't be. And I hope that you hear that message more than anything. I'm saying, get out of that season, right? But how do we get out of that season? Well, it's grace that leads to repentance. It's you believing what Jesus did, right? It's being a receiver of grace that will lead you to say no to sin. So that's how we do it. And if you want to make God really crazy happy um, and, and excite him uh, and that you're his child and that you're doing what pleases him, it's very simple. Just trust believe where if you're having struggles you're having pains you're having difficulties you're in fear whatever's going on in your life just say i'm leaning on jesus i believe the works of christ and let's get over ourselves that's the takeaway let's be good let's perform well but let's not pound our chest because it takes our attention off of the cross and puts it right back on us as we say look at me you want to be like me i'm never going to be called a hypocrite because i'm very quick to tell people I do my best, but if you're looking at me as the example, you're in for a world of trouble, right? I'm not focusing on me. I do my best, but I'm flawed. There are some people that do much worse than me, and there are some people that do much better than me. But I do know this. If you're a child of God who believes the promises of God that he sent a son, died on a cross to take our sins away, was resurrected to give us new life, you really believe that and you just simply look up to God and say, thank you. I promise you, whether you're guy one who's really making bad choices or guy two who's just really letting Jesus live in and through him, as we, uh, through yourself, as we exude the love of Christ, God is no more pleased with either one of you. Now, that's a reason for the first guy to say, you know what? You still love me. You're still just as pleased with me. What more of a motivator is for that guy to get up and say, man, I don't want to live this lifestyle. I want to live out my identity. I am clean. I am close not because of my choices, but because of the choice that Jesus made a little more than 2,000 years ago. Happy Easter. God bless you all.